So, I've got another Zoe in the workshop and I've been starting to notice some patterns in terms of reliability. So, um, the mileages at which different failures occur and which variants they are. And there's a few interesting things. And just for context, I mean, I only work directly on the major faults on Zoe's, major drivetrain faults. Um, I don't do servicing. Um, and I spend a lot of time talking to garages about major faults, sort of giving them advice and helping them source parts and stuff like that. So what are the different Zoe variants and what are the different kind of issues you can have and which ones seem to be more reliable? So this is very high tech, I'm sure you'll appreciate. Um, the first Zoe that came out in 2013 under the bonnet looked like this. OK, so you've got that um, metal box on top. OK, from 20. 15 there was a different motor type available and it looks like this one okay with the round plastic fan housing that's a motor cooling fan so this original one was a 5am motor and it's a water cooled motor and in 2013 that was the only variant you could buy and it was a q210 was the the variant and 5am is the motor type later that motor type is called the q90 okay Renault used to use the range in kilometres, the sort of um, manufacturer made up fanciful range. So theoretically it'd do 210 kilometres, <laughs> um, but later switched to the actual motor power output. Um, so that's a 90, 90 PS or whatever later, maybe 90 kilowatts, whatever, it's related to motor power. So that's why the number gets a lot smaller. But in 2013, they looked like that, okay. And then from 2015 onwards, they created the 5AQ, which looked like that, okay? So these early ones were prone to sort of charging issues and the charging on a Zoe is quite complex. They don't have a single onboard charger. This box on the top is kind of like a junction box and does some of the charging, but um, it, Zoes have what Renault call the chameleon charging system. And that actually uses several components to achieve the charging rectification and also boost conversion. Um, it is a very interesting system if you're into electronics, um, but suffice it to say that charging on a Zoe is complex. It actually even uses the motor. Um, it uses motor windings for boost conversion. So when the AC is rectified to DC to get it up to a high enough voltage to charge the high voltage battery, um, the motor windings are used for that boost conversion. So it doesn't have an onboard charger. In lots of other EVs, you will have an onboard charger and that unit takes AC and pushes out high voltage DC and the all the charging control and power conversion rectification is all done within that one box but that's not the case on the Zoe and that's why Zoe's all Zoe's can do three phase charging and all Zoe's can charge three phase at 22 kilowatts and these ones 5am with the metal box on the top can three phase charge at 43 kilowatts um, which is quite a cool party trick so these, with a metal box on top, 5am ones, the drivetrain was made by Continental. So the um, motor, motor controller, DC-DC converter, and this box, which is not the charger, it's more like a junction box. And um, that, that orange plug is where the charging cable connects to. So that's where the AC comes in. It kind of checks the voltages and it's got lots of plugs on it to connect to the high voltage system. So as I said, these ones had some issues with charging, these early ones. And it looked initially like these weren't as reliable than the later drivetrain ones, the 5AQ, and this is developed in-house by Renault this time, the 5AQ, whereas this was kind of bought in like a crate motor kind of um, system for content, by Continental for Renault, I guess so they could get the Zoe out quicker, but then Renault wanted to develop their own in-house one and didn't develop the Continental one, they literally did their own from scratch. So these early 5AM ones, they can have some charging issues. It can be a bit of fun and games to fix. The real downside is parts availability on these. In terms of reliability, they're not bad. Um, you can usually get the parts, but it can be a struggle, can be expensive. This top box, for example, um, is going to be about £3,000 from Renault, but you're probably not going to buy it from Renault. Uh, Renault, if you take it to a Renault garage and there's a fault inside this box, they'll only replace the whole thing. Other garages may, independent garages may open it up and replace parts inside, which is cool. But even second hand, this box working is going to set you back about a thousand pounds. So that's not too good. But 
the motors on this variant 5am are very strong you can have issues with the bearings in the reduction gear but um not like Zoe motor bearings on the 5AQ, which we'll come to. So these are the rapid AC charging ones, Q210 at start, Q90 later, and 5AM overall, and fairly reliable some charging issues. Parts availability is more of an issue now. So if you've got this 5AQ, there's a few variants of this, and some of them are proving to be more reliable than others. So this 5AQ motor is the one which has the motor bearing issues so if you've heard about zoe's making that hollow rumble noise motor bearing faults which is very common on zoe's that's this variant the 5aq motor type with the plastic fan housing on the top and this has an air cooled motor so that is the motor cooling fan it blows down it actually blows into the reduction gear but then through the motor and exhausts out the back on this 5am type it was um, the motor was water cooled so it doesn't have that cooling on the top so these are all the um variants of zoe that are 5aq that have this plastic fan housing on the top oh i should also show you how to find out what variant you have if you open the driver's door if you look uh, just down there you can see that says r19 this happens to be a ze40 okay i'm just covering up the thing because it's a customs car so when the 5aq variant came out in 2015 it was a r240 so that was theoretically the range in kilometers <laughs> so Renault were trying to sell you this as an improved one they said the original one 5am that came out in 2013 would do 210 kilometers and this 5aq one that you could get in 2015 would do 240 kilometers obviously it didn't but that's what it was called they then switched to the actual power output of the motor as being what, what they named the variant and they had the R90. So if you've got like a 2016 um, Zoe 5AQ, it's probably an R90. Um, and that continued to about 2018. Then they switched to the R110. And the R110 goes into the ZD50. And actually all Zoe vans are R110s. So ZD50s can be R110s or R135s. Now, interestingly... I've done quite a few motor bearing replacements on R110s. This car is actually making a noise, but I try not to currently work out whether it's the reduction gear or not, but this car has done 110,000 miles. It's interesting, the naming of these variants, because they've got more powerful, I suspect, and the R90 is more powerful than the R240. I suspect from the cars I've seen that I fixed and the mileages, the ones I'm getting that are making motor bearing noises that are higher mileages tend to be the R90s. Now, this R240 only had a 22 kilowatt hour battery, so that, could ha that had a range of about 80 ish miles 70 in the winter, 90 in the summer, that kind of thing. From the R90 onwards, you've got a 41 kilowatt hour battery, so your range is more like 130 to 160 miles. Okay, so. What I suspect happened is Renault found the reliability of these was quite good. Produced the R90 is a little bit more powerful. Reliability is still quite good because they're not failing until they get to 100,000 miles. But then they upped the power and then they upped the power again. Now, this R135 does have a slightly updated motor. So the jury's out on that one, although I have heard of replacements on those. But the R110 seems to be less reliable and I suspect it's just putting more power through the same design of motor. And actually this control box, what Renault called the PEC that wraps around the motor, is the same design, different software, in the R240, R90 and R110, but is an updated design in the R135. Whether <laughs> that's good or bad, I have seen some issues on them, so we'll see. Um, but yeah, so I suspect if you have a choice, the R240s are probably going to be reliable, but they're getting a bit old now and they're smaller batteries. R90, I reckon, is the sweet spot because this is the second R90 I've had in the workshop. The first one did need motor bearings, but it was above 100,000 miles. It was 116,000, which is pretty good. The R110s I've seen, sort of 60, 70,000, which is not too good. R135, we'll see. So if you've got a choice and you want a Zoe depends partly whether you want CCS rapid charging because that's only available on the later ones on the ZE50 which are R110 or R135 
But if you want a second car, you're not really going to drive it to you know the other end of the country. But you just want something that you can hammer around 100 miles and be pretty happy with, and it's going to be most reliable. I reckon the sweet spot is that R90. Um, and kind of by accident, that's the one um, that we had, and that is the blue car in the previous video that got to 116,000 before the motor bearings failed. And I suspect it's just due to motor power output. Less power is going into that motor, so there's less torque. I have a few other theories um, about why the bearings are failing, but there's a lot less torque going through those R90s than there is an R110 or an R135. And, um, yeah, that one seems to be more reliable so i hope that's interesting it was kind of a shame that um that there's not as many of these 5 a.m's around i would quite like a q90 actually because then you can take advantage of ac rapid charging but that's kind of dying out a little bit and ac three phase is kind of dying out a bit so there's not so many 22 kilowatt chargers around and not many 43 kilowatt it's only the sort of triple headed old bp pulse ones that seems to have that but yeah i quite like those they're quite fixable but it can it's a lot of faffing around trying to find parts it's a little bit of a pain but yeah i think that sweet spot is the r90 but if you've had a major issue on your zoe please let me know in the comments because all this information is just really really useful in terms of keeping these cars on the road really so i hope that's useful and i'll catch you later cheers